Come out, my sweetings. Be not afeard. I can hear ye rustling amongst the books. Come out, I prithee. Let ye be born anew. Ah, thou, where did my sweetings flee to? Did thee frighten them away? Why dost thou remain? Hast thou not had thine fill of conquest here? My sweetings, my loyal wolves, my oath-sworn dragon, thou hast defeated all. What more can thy wish to find here? Ah, it is thy wish to become a sweeting, fair and fine, to be reborn of amber. Then come, little Culver, I will birth thee anew, a deep. Dreamless slumber awaits thee. Lay down thy head, little Culver. Hmm, thine eyes glow bright with grace, like the eyes of someone I knew long ago. <sighs> no, I am mistaken. I am only remembering a tale I read in one of these books. Now, it is time for sleep. I will tell thee the tale after thou hast awakened. Ah, thou art persistent. Very well, close thine eyes. And I shall tell you now of the Lunar Queen. Long ago, when astrologers still gazed into the night sky, there was born to a family of astrologers a fledgling of great potential. She had a natural talent for sorcery, and spent much of her childhood studying the stars, like the Carian astrologers who came before her. But one night, her fate shifted. She encountered most enchanting full moon, glowing with magnetic power that drew her towards it, until she could feel it all around her, warm, incandescent. It was the most beautiful thing she had ever experienced. She was the first to discover how to harness lunar magic, and when those at the Academy of Rhea Lucaria witnessed her power
under her leadership, the academy flourished. Never had so many young sorcerers come to study in these halls. The magic could be felt from miles away. As was natural, the newly established royal family became a target for neighboring kingdoms. But the queen anointed a host of glintstone knights to defend her realm and while the surrounding kingdom fell to the Golden Order, the Carrion Knight repelled their attacks with glint blade sorcery. But there came a time when the Golden Order threatened to finally overthrow the Luna Queen. Late one night, when the queen was studying in the academy's grand library, the royal knight Loretta appeared before her with grave news. She told the queen that a golden host was outside the gate. The queen threw her books aside and told Loretta she would lead the knights herself. Loretta beseeched the queen not to put herself in harm's way. Radagon. The 
queen's heart froze, and she cried out for Loretta to cease immediately. The entire battlefield went still, nothing but the ragged breaths of wounded knights could be heard. The queen looked upon the champion Radagon as he beheld her, and they knew this fighting had to end. Love conquered that day as the Lunar Queen and Lord Radagon decided to put their differences aside and unite. The day of their wedding was glorious. Lord Radagon cleansed himself with celestial dew formed from the stars that guide fate. He swore his devotion to the Lunar Queen there in the church of vows, and they were wed. In time, their love begot three children, two sons, Radon and Rygard, and one daughter, the princess Rani. Even as a child, Radon looked up to his father, aspiring to one day become a champion in his own right. He listened well to his father's lessons, and once he was old enough, he went off to study in Celia, town of sorcery. My god, on the other hand, was indomitable by nature. He had his way, and he would not be challenged, even by his own father. He left to journey to Mount Gelmir, where he aspired to establish his own order outside the rule of the Garion royal family, and outside the golden border. The princess Rani favoured her mother in both appearance and in her talent for sorcery. Under the queen's guidance, Princess Rani encountered another moon, a cold, dark moon, from which she drew sublime power. Those years with Radagon and their children are said to be the happiest for the Lunar Queen. She no longer locked herself away to study ancient tomes into the early hours of the morning. She no longer visited the debate parlour, took little interest in the mundane arguments of the conspiracy. Her family became her joy, but those idyllic days couldn't last forever. A messenger arrived from the capital to bring news that the Elden Lord Godfrey had 
been exiled by Queen America, along with all his tarnished brethren. The Lunar Queen was concerned. What would this mean for her realm if Queen America would cast out even her own betrothed? What fate lay in store for a former enemy of the Golden Order? The Lunar Queen feared that the lands would descend to war once again, but Radagon assured her all would be well. She had nothing to fear with her carrion knights at the ready, and so they retired to their chamber. But in the morning, the queen awoke to find Radagon had disappeared, leaving behind nothing but an amber egg. Her heart was shattered, and she descended into despair. So even the princess Rani, her mother's pride, could not restore the queen's sanity. The conspectors at the academy, who had been so enthralled by the queen's lunar magic, now turned against her. Realizing their queen was lost, they locked her away somewhere in the academy, never to be seen again. It is said sometimes you can hear her sigh, or you might He is nothing but a ghost now. Hush now, little Culver. Thou art on the precipice of sleep, soon to be cocooned in the most peaceful slumber. And when the awakening I will be a sweeting, pure, one of the finest sweetings. Now listen close, little Culver, and remember the melody, for when thine eyes 